بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said and is in narrated on Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فورد Whoever does something in this matter of ours, then is rejected. Letting us know that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade bid'ah, forbade going against his sunnah, because that's one of the pillars of ibadah. That's how we get our worship accepted by Allah subhanahu wa taala. So if a person differs. With the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in another hadith, "Man ragba an sunnati falaysa minni." Whoever, uh, whoever differs with my Sunnah or rejects my Sunnah, then they are not from, they're not from me. Meaning, they're not from my Ummah. That isn't making the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The ulama explained that that doesn't mean that they are disbelievers in Allah, but that is wa'id shadid. You know, that's showing us that. You know, you have a, you're trying to come up with a new way to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and depending upon the level of innovation, if it's bid'iya, kufriya, you know, if it has aspects of kufr and disbelief in it, then of course that person can leave the fold of Islam by their newly invented matter. But in fact, if it's bid'a ghair mukaffara, then it is bid'a which is madhmum, which is sinful, and the person still a, a believer in Allah. And the Prophet وسلم, but they have innovated in the religion of Islam. They've fallen into bid'ah. And although you'll have some people, the later from the later generations, who came well after the the, the Sahaba and the Tabi'in with Tabi'a Tabi'in, those first three generations, you had some who tried to classify bid'ah and say there's good bid'ah and bad bid'ah and makruh. Wa, and put the arkan, the uh, five uh, rulings upon bid'ah that some bid'ah is, is, is hated, some bid'ah is uh, haram, some bid'ah is, is actually encouraged. This is not, this is later mutabir. This is not from the Quran or the Sunnah. It's not established in the Quran and the Sunnah that there is a good type of innovation, there's a good way to innovate in the religion. But if what is meant that the, there's a good bid'ah, that you've revived the sunnah, then that is something altogether different. That means you're reviving something that's already a part of the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, that it had become dead or not practiced in a particular time. For example, there's many things now that people don't practice, uh, which the Prophet Sallallahu practiced. For example, Salat al istikhara A lot of times we're very weak in practicing this. Or something like this. So a person who revives that and encourages the people, then in fact they've revived a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Something that the people have left. But in fact it is already an asl. It's already part of the religion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so this is incredibly important for us to understand the groups and the sects in this time with that lens by looking at are they calling people to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? are they calling people in a way the Prophet ﷺ called the people are they practicing what the Prophet ﷺ practiced are they distorting the principles of the Qur'an? All of these things, when we look at Jamaat al-Takfir wa Hijra, when we look at Jamaat al-Ahbash, Jamaat al-Akhwan al-Muslimin, Jamaat al-Tabliq, and all the other groups that have arisen, then we have to look at them under that microscope, under that scope. It's not in order to cause disunity with our brothers. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to be brothers. Hold on, all of you, steadfast to the rope of Allah, and do not divide. And the rope of Allah is what? As some of the Mufassirin, they say, the rope of Allah is the Qur'an. And some say the rope of the law is the Sunnah. And some say 
that it is the Quran and the Sunnah, which is which covers both of those things, and they don't. There's no ta'arud. There's no contradiction in that. So it shows that the Muslims have to be one, and that's what we want. We love that. We want to be with our brothers. Who 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 wants to have someone in faith and dislike them, or in fact dislike anyone? But when people deviate and change the religion of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, Abdullah Herari and Jamaat al-Ahbash, what they do in Ethiopia, and they encourage the people to go to, uh, to seek refuge from the dead. This has no place in Islam. It's not from the Quran, and it's not from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet sallallahu didn't seek refuge in the other uh, prophets, alayhim after salatu wasalam. And after the Prophet sallallahu the Sahaba didn't seek refuge in him, and they didn't supplicate to him, and they didn't supplicate through him. But in fact, all of the worship goes to Allah, and, and the Prophet sallallahu said that a du'a huwa ibadah, that supplication is worship. And that's why, as believers in Allah, and believers in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that we have to know that supplication goes to Him, Allah subhanahu wa taala alone. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from innovation in the Deen, and bless us to be from Ahlus Sunnah, following the Minhaj and the methodology of the Salaf al-Saleh. Rabbana Allahi alaihim. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم